As our family discovered our issues and made changes and, and quickly implemented a strategy, uh, which was very, very painful, probably the most painful thing, um, despite having the, the thing said to, to both my wife and I and, and things such as, um, I don't love you, um, that's, that's a new one for, for me because I've got three children that say it to me multiple times a day. I've raised three people in this, I've raised three others in the exact same household the exact same way. Where did I go wrong? My pride says I know how to parent. What happened is I had to go back and realize I didn't know how to parent one child. And not knowing how to parent one child, that's one child. So there had to be major changes and we were, we were certainly ready to make those changes. I think that the, what I'm here tonight to share is, is what, what we discovered um, upon digging in deeper, we learned quickly some of the deep and dark spots that, uh, that our child had been to and it was scary. And what we learned is that, um, I'm going kind of to the social media outlet and the idea that our ch child cried out for attention and it came through social media, it came through likes and friends and followers. And these numbers became quite large. Um, we looked at one instance of a suicidal girl who committed suicide over the internet, uh, over her computer um, camera, and in doing so gained one million likes. And it's like one million likes and you're dead. The idea though was that that makes wonderfully, that makes a lot of sense to us as adults, but doesn't necessarily make sense to children. Because a million likes is a lot of likes. The, the children are drawn to the drama and the media and the circus atmosphere of, of what goes on with all of the sites, these various sites. And everyone has to be able if, and, and I won't go into too much detail, but certainly for, for us, we also had, uh, you know, there was, there was our child grace prep, there was other grace prep, and the, the internet became a place where they communicated like they wouldn't communicate at school, and like none of the parents knew that they might be communicating. Um, the platform was some of these various sites, the idea that uh, your child has two or three that you follow and you think that's all of them. Well, we, were, we, we actually found at least 10 more that were outside of what we knew that were hidden through ways that we didn't know they could be hidden. But uh, my child would sit awake in her closet at night and, and respond to all these thousands of, of different social media outlets. In, in, um, no rest, a frenetic pace of keeping up with all of these things that go on. Imagine if you had 10 Instagram accounts. Um, just the pace in which keeping up with all of that takes. And the despair that you would feel if you felt like these were your friends and that you had to respond to everybody every day and that you wanted to get these reformations but what we found there were not necessarily reformations. We found incredible hate and meanness. Um, it, was, it was sickening what people, what kids would say. And again, it was more of the, and I'm not, I'm not talking about, I'm talking generically all kids that get on there. And we don't even know that they're kids. There was one uh, that I recall that was ask.fm and that we found out that th this, is a, this was a website where a lot of Grace Prep kids' names are and then kids go to there and talk about these kids. It could be any school, but it was certainly, there's, we, uh, I hadn't looked at it before this, I should have, but I looked at it 
a year ago or less than a year ago, but it was just, ba just basic, uh, just talking. And I mean, and, and it's one of these places, if you can't say anything good, don't say good at all. That's not what goes on. They, they want to call out faults and foibles to people and somehow gain a, a social hierarchy from using the, the various media sources. And that, those that control the most likes and the most social media are maybe the, the kids that are seen in a particular light. Um, it's easy to be mean when you can't see the other person hurt eye to eye. What we see as adults and know from the way we communicated versus these kids. How quickly they all link together. The speed in which 5,000 kids can come together on a subject. Um, for us, it was the idea that if you were on the social media and you might say, I'm abused at home. How quickly you can have 20,000 people on your side. And then a bunch that aren't. But that cry, that cry out on the internet, that type of response. Um, we discovered a, a, a hate site. This one, this one was on our child. It wasn't, uh, we've discovered them on others, but um, hate site set up like you're that person, but it's actually other people taking your pictures off of your stuff and then using them to set up something that's fake. And in turn, we spent extreme resources in trying to get this taken down. And the social media sites are no help. Uh, I even talked to my attorney, and he said, nothing, you, just nothing there. So setting up hate sites um, is something that's out there. You're not supposed to be able to cre create these sites until you're 13, but that really doesn't seem to the social media is not paying attention to that number. As we retrace those steps that our child was going through with, that, with all of the social media and the darkness and despair, it, it had to be the most ugly, painful, very vivid still, the things that you saw said about your child spelled out in detail, the other kids that are crying out for help, the society in general that was there that just seemed like that's where they were and, and just the, uh, the pure despair of it all was extremely eye-opening to us. The fact that um, we missed this as a parent. Certainly was embarrassing, humbling, and a subject that we didn't want to talk about. We did, we, we, it took a while, and we thought others might feel poorly about us and hold opinions and things, but when we realized that there's only one answer to solving the problem, and that's just lay it all before the Lord. And let him take over in the, in the despair that we were in, in our family. And I'm happy to say that the answers to our prayers didn't come in small answers. They came in gigantic answers. Gigantic steps. Steps that I just couldn't see possible. Just, you'd pray for a book full of items. And then as those items are being filled... It's like there's no way that these items could be filled because what we were praying for, only Jesus knew what those prayers were. Man didn't know what they were. And then to have them take place and fulfilled one after the other was a testament to prayer, openness, healing. So my... My prayer for each of you is that tonight does set in with um, where we're at as, as, a, as a school and as a, a family of Christ. I'm glad to share my story because I'm one that 
I, I feel confident in sharing my story and looking to the future. And not that we're completely healed um, as, a, as a family or as, as a, uh, my younger children. I, I still have some prayers for them. And I think that there's still some issues to, um, that time is going to help there. But I do pray for each of you and, and as, a, as a body of Christ that, that, we, that we pray and work together and, and we can overcome these challenges. And if, if my family can, uh, can be of help in, in a private setting or you want to call and talk to me about any of these things, I'm an open book. I did pull a lot of my other friends in to, uh, to finally just get on, you know, get on my knees and just say, hey, I'm not going to run from it, and I'm not going to deny it. I wish I were a better parent. That hurts. But the Lord said, I'm a man. And that's, that's where it was, down on her knees, down on her face, crying. So with that, I appreciate, uh, appreciate being here tonight. And my prayers again are for each of you, and thank you very much.